मोदी से आज जीवन में है टू पोर्टफोलियोस वन इज केमिकल एंड फर्टिलाइजर एंड अनदर वन इज न्यू एंड रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी इन केमिकल एंड फर्टिलाइजर पर्टिकुलरली फॉर फर्टिलाइजर वी हैव टू बी ए सेल्फ रिलायंट आत्मनिर्भर सिंस लास्ट टेन इयर्स आफ्टर मोदी गवर्नमेंट कम टू द पावर अराउंड सिक्स क्लोज फर्टिलाइजर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया यूनिट्स रिस्टार्टेड एंड ईच हैविंग ए ट्वेल्व पॉइंट सेवन लैक मेट्रिक टन कैपेसिटी पर एन एम नाउ फाइव फर्टिलाइजर फैक्ट्रीज हैज बीन स्टार्टेड प्रोडक्शन वन इज एट टू स्टार्ट नेक्स्ट ईयर सो बाय ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव द एंटायर यूरिया प्रोडक्शन विल बी ए सफिशियंट फॉर और ओन कंट्रीज रिक्वायरमेंट एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस द नैनो यूरिया इज टेक्नोलॉजी डेवलप बाय इफको इन इंडिया दिस इज अ वेरी यूजफुल फॉर द फार्मर्स फॉर कॉस्ट सेविंग एंड एफिकेसी एंड एनवायरमेंट फ्रेंडली दैट ऑलरेडी थ्री आर फोर प्रोडक्शन यूनिट्स has come up another two three is coming in future and in particularly pharma we have brought the price control substantially and just yesterday only प्रधानमंत्री जन औषधी केन्द्र विच इज ए जेनेरिक गुड क्वालिटी अफोर्डेबल मेडिसीन फॉर द पर्टिकुलरली फोकस्ड फॉर पुअर पेशंट्स सो एस्टर्डे द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हेज सेलेब्रेटेड टेन थाउजंड सेंटर एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर हेज एम बी एस एस टार्गेट ऑफ टोटली ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड centers for coming another 5 years so in last 10 years almost more than 25000 crores of rupees saved by the poor patients buying this medicines from the janavshidhi kendras in janavshidhi kendras nearly 50 to 90% less cost of medicines available as compared with the market medicines so in chemical sector also in future after corona mahamari the world is looking china plus one that is plus one is only india the chemical sector have looking towards the india policy and we brought a very good policy to invest in india through fdi in future the india will become a global hub for the chemicals global hub for the pharmaceuticals presently our pharma sector is doing very well you can see the any developed countries if anybody buys four medicines out of four that will be one at least manufactured in india so pharma sector is also we brought many pli schemes after corona corona has taught a very good lessons for the whole world in health sector because of the, those good lessons our prime minister has given a directions the critical medicines should manufacture in india in future we should not suffer the shortage of medicines or the raw materials in india because of keeping in mind this the pl production link incentive scheme has brought and around 40 critically 
medicines is manufacturing in India and still we brought many PLS schemes for other uh, API also and uh, surgical equipments also we have brought a PLS schemes most of the surgical equipments and surgical instruments presently we are bringing from outside countries that is importing now we have allowed them to take a transfer technology transfer and make a production in india and many uh, manufacturers has come forward to set up their unit in india so chemical sector pharma sector and uh, fertilizer sector we are the uh, atmanirbhar in future Presently in Janav Siddhi Kendras, around 856 medicines are available, 256 surgical implants, equipments is available. Still we are, it is a regular process, we are adding more and more medicines and more uh, surgical implants and uh, equipments and surgical uh, parts also. It is a false propaganda. Nano urea, the technology, the ground experiment has made, and the after getting the positive results, then only government of India has allowed to production and sales. And that cost itself is a 260 rupees per 500 ml bottle. And this, uh, in the early stage, the farmers always to hesitate to use. And it is quite naturally, the government and particularly the agriculture department is giving the knowledge of this nanotechnology, how to use and how it is uh, useful for the crop and farmers as price also. So that it is does uh, the pro false propaganda is there. See the clan since last two three decades, always there is a dialogue on climate change, the question on climate change, the effect of climate change. So after coming to the power, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, in COP15, Prime Minister has set a ambitious target of 175 gigawatt of power production by 2022 through non-fossil fuels. So on, on COP15, Prime Minister's ambitious target has opened many eyes of the world leaders. Is it possible for India? Then we have achieved 175 gigawatt of non-fossil fuels power energy generation by 2022. And COP26, Honorable Prime Minister has set it by 2030 500 gigawatt of non-fossil fuels energy production in India. Already our ministry under the guidance of Honorable Prime Minister, we have planned meticulously by 2030, I am sure that we will achieve 500 gigawatt of totally uh, non-fossil fuels energy. Accordingly, our ministry has brought in new and renewable energy also, the PLI schemes for manufacturing of cell to models indigenously. Already many big players, they have got this facility from this policy 
and government of india has brought a new green hydrogen policy also already policy has rolled out and most of the big manufacturers are very interested to invest in generation of green hydrogen also so after independence of india around 65 years before coming to the power modi as prime minister most of the government has brought a many social security schemes but lack of government regulations policies and involvement of public and officials not showing their interest at most because of that most of the schemes not reached at optimum level maximum reach in last 10 years as said by prime minister sabke sa sabka vikas sabka prayas aur sabka sabka vishwas aur sabka prayas because of that today modi government schemes have reached around 81 crore people still modi seeing some may be left out to take a benefit of modi government so this viksit bharat sankalp yatra through this yatra throughout pan india around 270000 gram panchayat 4800 urban areas this modi guarantee van will be travel to each and every gram panchayat in that programs there are series of activities there one is oath taking the common citizen should be take a oath the bharat should be developed country by 2047 and as a citizen i have to know and i have to follow my responsibility as a citizen of the country and as a citizen the colonial mindset should not be there so like this all these points is there apart from that pradhan mantri ujjwal yojana soil health card many more schemes is available at the spot and i have visited i have uh, attended uh, viksit bharat sankalp yatra in my constituency as well as in tamil nadu and maharashtra also the response of the public is very huge and in karnataka wherever the non bjp government in the state they are decided that not to cooperate for this vikshit bharat sankalp yatra and it is a federal structure and always they make a noise loudly if somebody something is happening through government state the central government these people say that it is a federal government the central is not cooperating and now i am asking this government as a cm sidaramaiya in india there is a federal structure and this is government of india's programs and you should cooperate but chief minister has ordered not to cooperate and from chief minister office the call has been gone to all the uh, district collectors saying that not to cooperate for this uh, sankalp yatra but anyway government of india's officials and our workers and our public representative are doing the success of this vikshit bharat definitely it is a scared it is a hesitant and it will grow the popularity for the modi only and uh, 
already in Karnataka, within a less than six months, the government has become a most unpopular and untrusted. And there is no development and the development has become a standstill. And they have the fear, if cooperate, we cooperate this Vixit Bharat, then only Modi's vava will be there. That is not like that. The Modi has done a lot of things and Modi ji has formulated many good schemes for the poor of this country, for the farmers, for the women, for the youths. So that these political parties are only for the appeasement of politics and they are against the development and particularly the financial empowerment of the women and poor because of this fear they are opposing. Chief Minister has announced very late and that even hardly I think it is a 2000 crores. When our B.S. Yadrapa was CM of this state, he has immediately re released funds from his government and after central government they have compensated. So even this CM also should do that but he didn't done it. Because the government of India already survey has been done. The state government recently they have sent a proposal and within a short period the government of India will release the farmer relief funds. The Karnataka people have elected 25 BJP MPs. And in 2014, 17 MPs has elected. In a span of 10 years, how many projects Government of India's flagship programs has brought to the Karnataka? And how much funds we have brought to the Karnataka? How many infrastructures from grassroots level to the urban area? You can compare this 10 years with the past 65 years, then this CM will know what the 25 MPs have done for the Karnataka. So definitely the newly elected BJP state president B.Y. Vijayendra is a youth and uh, he has a very good experience in organization. Last two decades he has given a very good service in organizing the party and now he has elected for as a MLA. Definitely under his uh, presidency Karnataka BJP will take a new height for the coming Lok Sabha elections, definitely we will win and we have the target of 28 out of 28. And as a opposition leader, he is a very experienced, senior, dynamic leader of our Bharati Janta Party. Bharati Janta Party. And he will be definitely uh, bring the notice to the government what are the problems facing by state government state and at the same time what problems are facing the citizen of Karnataka and I am sure our Ashok will be the one of the best opposition leader in coming days and our Ashok and B.Y. Vijendra both unitedly fight in house as well as outside the assembly house also.
B.Y. Vijendra is already a state vice president. Earlier term, he was a general secretary for the youth wing. And before even 2007-8-9, he was a, in organization. And he is very active in day-to-day -day affairs of the our organizational activities. So that you cannot be directly say it is a dynastic politics. Dynastic politics, nothing is doing Rahul Gandhi. Nothing has done. From he took charge from uh, her father, mother. In the last six months, the guarantee schemes fate itself is a declining. I don't think the people of Karnataka is very well aware and very intelligent. You can see in the past, most of the elections, if simultaneously is also done, they voted one party for the state and another party for the center. The, the Karnataka people are, because of, I am saying intelligent, they are a nationalistic mind, they are a nationalistic thinking, so that who is better for the national interest? So Karnataka people definitely vote for the BJP, not on the basis of the, these false and fake guarantees. They thought that the consolidation of minorities and other votes, but it didn't happen. And this time, the J JDS is aligned with BJP. Definitely, as compared with the 2019, the JDS coming to BJP is definitely will benefit BJP as well as JDS in each and every constituency. The polarization of votes definitely it will favor to the BJP and as well as the JDS. In India, always there are elections and the media persuasion is trying to put the it is a Persistent that the coming election is quarter final, final, semi final, like that. But of course, the mood of that state, people's state, maybe reflect, but uh, the public throughout the India as a national election will see a different view. So, definitely in this election, some the, the trend is. Is good for BJP. We are in, we are hoping the increasing the vote percentage, and we are getting around two to three states. Particularly, the BJP is a very well internal democratic party. From booth worker to the national president, the party will allow to say his views. That doesn't mean that it is a indifferent. Everyone has the rights to say in the interest of the party, and it will take a positive by the our president or whoever be concerned. See, after the assembly election, there is some setback in our Kalyan Karnataka region. We have elected only few MLA seats. 
ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ನ ಅಂಡರ್ ದ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಿ ವೈ ವಿಜೇಂದ್ರ ಇನ್ ನಿಯರ್ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟೂರ್ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ರೀಜನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಕೇಡರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎ ಬೂಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಎ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಲೋಕಸಭಾ ಎಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೈವ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ಓನ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೈವ್ ಟು ಫೈವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಓನ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ವಿನ್ ಫೈವ್ ಸೀಟ್ಸ್ it is a party high command decision and it is a parliamentary vote decision they will take it at appropriate time so each and every election there will be a different strategy and the need of the situation they may change or they may not change it depends on the situation and the whatever the feedback they will get ಭಾರತೀಯ ಜನತಾ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಎ ಲೈವ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಇವನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಕ್ಸಿತ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಯಾತ್ರ ಅವರ್ ಕಾರ್ಯಕರ್ತ ವೆರಿ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಎ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ now after president bw vijendra now the taluk mandal president and district president is going to announce shortly hopefully so that after once announced already in the last assembly elections booth committee has been done phase promote has been done so again once again we will start ಪೇಸ್ ಪ್ರಮುಖ ಬೂತ್ ಸಮಿತೀಸ್ ಮಂಡಲ್ ಸಮಿತೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಸಮಿತೀಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ರೀಜನಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ದ ಎಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ definitely this congress government is unable to handle the power crisis in karnataka because of their mishandling today the karnataka farmers is suffering just they are getting maximum two hours in a day time since last 10 years there will be no shortage at all throughout the india even the price crisis shortage in production in the world market the prime minister has influenced many country leaders to support in this crisis of fertilizer and we have managed very well importing the fertilizer and uh, the raw material of the fertilizer and finished product of the fertilizer cost has been gone to around four times more than 2021 but uh, prime minister has not allowed to increase the price of the fertilizer do increase the subsidy in 2022 there is hardly 86000 crores subsidy has given but in 2324 around 260000 subsidy is given but the price has kept as earlier price for the farmers so all government of india to minimize the chemical fertilizers to save the soils health 
PM Praman, Pranam, Pranam, Pranam is there and Paramparagat Krasi is there, Natural Farming is there. So this is uh, many schemes we are supporting the farmers to reduce the utilization of the fertilizers at minimum. See, we will not allow state wise. We allow the national wise and whoever is come forward to utilize the maximum ones and we will definitely we will support them. Welfare schemes is required and we should support for the needy persons. And freebie is a different, it is a politically motivated to gain the support in elections. It will not help in their life. For example, after this budget money, the entire budget money is going to the only freebies. There will be no development, there will be no circular economy, there will be no employment, the unemployment will increase. So that adverse impact of these freebies is more. But at the same time, whoever the poor, we should give the financial support. Whoever the unemployed, we should allow them to work and we, we should give a opportunity to jobs, either government, either private or self-employment. Then only their life will become happy, otherwise it will become miserable.